OK, so we are on to the uh, next unit. Um, so the first lesson in the next unit is on something called geometric sequences. OK, so uh, geometric sequences uh, or sequences in general are kind of like number patterns. All right, so if I ask you to uh, fill in the next number in this pattern, right, uh, you may have come up with generally there's two kind of two options here. All right, so uh, the first one uh, would be if you see the if you see the three and the twelve, um, you can you may assume that the jump here is to add nine. So then the next number here would be uh, twenty one. Okay, so that's one of the options um, if you were to add nine. Now the other option or the other thing that you may see, I write it up again is that to go from 3 to 12, you're multiplying by 4. So the next possible number that could go there it would be uh, 48. OK, so uh, neither of which are wrong and right, right or wrong. OK, uh, but there's a there's a difference. So the first one here, this is called an arithmetic sequence. And I believe um, you work through these uh, in pre-calc 11. Um, this is called a geometric sequence. OK, so um, when you so basically when you multiply by the same number and the this number here is called the common ratio. Um, you're going to go to the next one, right? So then if I was to follow this pattern here, uh, 48 would go. Well, I would do that in my head. 48 would go to 196. Okay, if I was to multiply by four again, all right. Um, no, 192. 192, I think. All right, so, um, yeah, 192. Do that. All right, so if you multiply by a consistent number to the common ratio, <laughs> it creates a geometric sequence, okay? Um, so we're going to be looking at these geometric sequences in this lesson. All right, so. Um, for example, here, um, if I want to find the sixth term in this geometric sequence, um, this would go on. Um, so this would be the fourth place, fifth place, and then basically what would go here. OK, so if you look here now, the common ratio can be negative, right? So I can multiply by. Um, in this case, I would be multiplying by negative three each time. OK, so um, now. If I was to just fill in the blanks to get the sixth term, right? This could be somewhat uh, meticulous, but I'll just do that with a calculator right here on the side here. Um, so if I went four, or sorry, thirty-six times negative three, right? So I'll get next one here is negative one hundred eight, and then. Uh, times it by three again. Okay, so that's positive 324. And if I multiply that by three again, it would be negative 972. Okay, so to answer this question, uh, we could just, you know, multiply by negative three each time and uh, get to the sixth term. Now you're probably Thinking, well, this is not the most efficient way, right? So let's say instead of the sixth term, I asked you to find like the 28th term. Uh, we don't want to keep multiplying it by three times, uh, negative three, 28 times. However, there is a uh, kind of a formula that we can come up with if you think about it. Okay. So uh, in terms of notation, all right, um, the term number, so the, there'll be a T with a little subscript. This, this is the location, the little numbers so in this case for this question here for this example t1 the first term is four and likewise t2 is negative 12 t3 is uh, positive 36 and so on all right so um now if we kind of figure this out uh t t2 right is basically i took t1 and multiplied it by negative three right to get the negative 12. So I took the first term 4, multiplied by negative 3 to get 12. Um, now the third term, 
So if I wanted to get from the first term and just straight to the third term, notice that I multiplied by uh, negative three twice. Right? So in other words, this would be T1 times negative three times negative three. Well, this is the same as T1 times negative three squared. Okay. Um, and so uh, basically what we did is we multiplied by negative three twice, right? So what you'll notice here is that to get to this ratio number three in relation to, just grab a different color here, in relation to the location in terms of the exponent, you'll notice that there's one less. Right, in the exponent, which makes sense, right? Because you're going to multiply it by the the ratio uh, one last time. Okay. Now, if I wanted to find, for example, so let's just kind of uh, what we're going to do is just kind of logically work this one out. Well, then T six, the sixth term, is going to be the first term times negative three in this case five times. Okay. So in this case, if I was to actually plug in the numbers here, so let's go um, T1, uh, T1, which is four, and multiply it by negative three to the fifth, we should get, uh, it's gonna be four times, and what I would do here, just with the calculator, just punch in uh, negative three to the fifth. All right, so, um, let's see here. Oops, yeah. Negative three uh, to the fifth power. And we get negative two hundred forty-three. Okay. And if I multiply negative two forty-three times four, I do get negative uh, nine seventy-two. That's negative 972. Okay, which is what we got here. What we did um, this method here, we call it kind of like the caveman method. Uh, sorry, sorry. So, yeah, what we did first here was the caveman method, where we just keep multiplying by negative three. Um, but this is the formula. Okay, so, in general, the formula. To find, the, to find the nth term, so Tn. Okay, so n is kind of variables. It's just kind of like a general formula. So if I wanted to find Tn, it would be the first term, which is T1, multiplied by the common ratio to the n minus one power. Okay, so this is your, what they call the general term. So this will allow, this formula here allows us to find any, any term or any number that's in that sequence. Uh, depending on its location and depending on the first, so the first term and depending on the ratio, right? Common ratio. All right, so hopefully that that makes sense. All right, so I got another another example down here. Um, okay, so for this next example, if, if T three is twenty and T five is eighty, we want to find the first term. Okay, so if we lay this question out. Basically, I don't know the first term. I don't know the second term. I know the third term is twenty. I don't know the fourth term, but I do know the fifth term is 80. And what we're asked to find here is this T1, the first term. OK, so how could we possibly do this? Um, so what we need to see first or what we need to realize first is that um, to get from 20 to 80, you're multiplying it by the ratio, right? Then, okay, so if I go 20 multiply ratio, I get to the fourth term, this blank. And then from there to there, I'm going to multiply the ratio again uh, to get to 80. Okay, so just by looking at this, we can see that 20 times r times r, which is r squared, is got to equal 80. So if I solve this equation, I should be able to get the common ratio. So that means I would divide both sides by 20. Um, so therefore, r squared is equal to 4. And then when I take the square root of both sides, 
uh, r is going to equal 2. Now, is it just positive 2 or could it be negative 2 as well? All right, so since we don't know whether this number here is positive or negative, in this case, it's going to be positive and negative. So it could be positive 2 or negative 2, the ratio. Okay. So once we got the ratio here, we kind of we can kind of work our way backwards from 20. 20. And go in the other direction. So if I want to go in the other direction, I'm going to divide by the ratio. Right? So uh, 20 divided by 2 is 10. But again, we don't know if the ratio is positive or negative, so I'm going to actually write in here plus or minus 10. It could be either one. And then if I divide by 2 again, um, this is going to be uh, 5. Start to get something else. But this 5 here is actually only positive. The reason for that is, um, let's just say I want, let's just say that the ratio is 2. So then uh, if the ratio is 2, then this number here in the middle would be positive 10. And then if I take positive 10 and divide it by the positive 2, it would take me 5, right? Now, if the ratio is negative 2, that means this middle number would be, well, I'm kind of making a little bit of a mess here, but it would be negative 10. But then if I divide negative 10 by negative 2, it turns out to be a positive. So either way, it has to be positive 5. So therefore, there's only one possibility for T1. Okay, so it can't be negative 5. It can only be positive 5. Okay, so therefore, T1 is equal to positive 5. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. All right, so whenever, you, if you don't know the ratio, whether it's positive or negative, like the every second term could be positive or negative, but every other term must be, in this case, positive. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Okay, next up, we want to find the, the general term. Okay, so again, general term, we're just going to use that formula, the Tn equals T1 uh, times the ratio to the n minus 1 power. Okay, so we do know this, this information in this case. So the first term in this case is 5, so I'm going to sub in 5 for T1. The ratio uh, is... Um, ooh, yeah, we have two options. So T1, there's, or for Tn, there's two options. So first one here, I'm just going to put positive 2. Uh, and, and then the n, n minus 1. Okay, so we don't have anything to sub in for n because that's basically a general term. Okay. Or, so this could be this answer, or it could be Tn equals 5, bracket negative 2. Our ratio, common ratio, could be negative 2 to the n minus 1. Okay, so in this case, both of these are correct. Okay, so we don't know whether the ratio is positive two or negative two. We to include both possibilities. Okay, we do know the first term T one is five. All right, so that's that, and then uh, the n stays as n because we're looking for the general term. Okay, now if I do know the formula, then I can find the, I can answer the next one here, which is the ninth term. Okay, so um, so T nine. Okay, so actually, I'm just going to write up that formula again. So Tn equals 5 times 2 to the n minus 1, right? or Tn equals 5 times negative 2 to the n minus 1. So in this case, we have two possibilities. So if I use the first one here, T9, you know, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to sub in 9 in for n. Okay, so this will take a little bit of, can't do this in my head, right? So I'm going to do this, use the calculator here. Uh, so Tn, or sorry, T9 is 5 times 2 to the 8th power. Okay, so we're going to do the exponent first. So let's just drag that over. Um, okay, so uh, 2 to the, 2 to the 8th power. Is equal to 256, and I'm going to multiply that by 5. All right, so actually, let's write the in between. So that's 256. So 5 times 256, which is, oh, I've already forgotten it. I think it's 1024. 
Oh, 1280. Never mind. 1280. Okay. Now, um, this one over here, right? Uh, if I did the same thing, um, kind of a shortcut is I already know that this is equal to this because I have an even power here. So if I take a negative, no, negative number, raise it to an even power, which would be eight, it'll turn positive. And so in this case, either formula you use, we're going to get 12 and 80. Because right? of it, because it's an even power, so this this number here will turn into 256, even if I have negative two there. You know what? I'm just going to write that down. All right. So again, if I use this one here, T9, five times negative two to the nine minus one, T9 equals five times negative two to the eighth power. So what I'm saying is, uh, since this is an even exponent, negative two, a negative number to an even exponent is always positive. So we do end up with the same number. Uh, so T9 is going to equal 1280. Okay. Uh, if this was like, uh, let's just say, instead of the ninth term, I asked to find the 10th term, then we would sub in 10 there, which would make this nine, which would make this number negative. Okay. But anyways, I'm going to erase that just in case. Uh, so that is not, um, yeah. Okay, so that's not. Um, all right, this one here. Okay, so now we want to find the number of terms in this geometric sequence. Okay, so it starts at two, and the sequence goes on, and it gets to 13,122. All right, so uh, what we're not going to do is we're just not going to fill out this, fill out the in-between here and just figure out the count. Right, so that's kind of a kind of a um, inefficient uh, way of doing it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to solve. I'm going to ask you. Oh, I'm going to show you how to solve these these equations where we're looking for the the term number. Okay. So uh, so what do we know so far? I'm just going to write the general formula here. So T n is T one times the ratio to the n minus one. Okay. So this is the general formula for a sequence. So in this case, T n so the nth term is 13,122. Okay, we don't know where it is, but we actually, we know that the number itself, this here is TM. We don't know the location, but we do know that that is the number in the sequence. We want to find the location. Okay, so this is going to equal uh, sub in T1, which is two. And the ratio, you can figure that out too, right? So ratio here, we can see that it's, you probably do that in here, you're going to multiply it by three. Uh, however, if it's, if the numbers aren't, you know, easily divide visible, then what you can do is you can take you can find the ratio by taking one term. Uh, so let's keep it simple. Let's say it's the second term and dividing it by the first term. Okay, so if I did six divided by two is three. Okay, so I, um, so that's I think that's pretty intuitive, right? You're, you kind of do that in your head. You just kind of see six divided by two is three. So therefore, two times three is six. All right. So if the numbers are a little bit, you know. Uh, I would say a little bit off, a little bit weird, and you can use this to find the ratio. All right. So in this case, the ratio is three. So I'm going to plug in three here, and I'm going to solve. I need to solve for n. Okay, I want to find how many terms are in the sequence, so I'm going to find the location of 13,122. Now, this you have never done before. Okay, you've never solved for uh, solve for the uh, the exponent. So what? So this is the first time you're probably going to see this. So um, yeah. So don't be surprised if you're a little bit a little bit confused. Or but what I'm going to do here is just kind of walk you through what the steps would be. Okay. So the first thing I want to do here is I want to um, isolate the three to the n minus one power. Okay. So what I what I need to do here is divide both sides by two. So that way that cancels with this. All right, so remember when we're solving an equation, you're doing bed mass backwards. Um, so the order of our operations, when we're solving, you're doing it backwards, right? So we want to get rid of any adding and subtracting first, which in this case there isn't. But now you can see that there's a multiplication. So that's what we're going to do first is we'll get rid of that multiplication by dividing both sides by two. All right, so on the left-hand side here, um, if I take, uh, pull up the calculator, uh, 13,122, I'm going to divide it by two. I get 6,561. Okay, so three to the n 
minus one power. All right. This is where I introduce something new. Uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to actually log both sides. All right, so I'm going to take the log. You may have seen this button on your calculator, scientific calculator. Okay, so this is called a log logarithm for this log being for it. But basically, what we're going to do is we're going to log both sides. Okay, so it's kind of like um, kind of like taking the square root of both sides of an equation. Right? If you have a, like a square to, and a number. Like to get if you had like x squared right you square root both sides this is similar to that you're you're logging both sides all right so um I wonder if they have it here yeah so the log button they come up they come up this thing so what do we do here actually i'm gonna do this just show some of the screen there no, wait, don't keep toggling back and forth um Okay, so this log button, so it's on all scientific calculators, okay? Now, the thing about logging is when you log both sides, something is called like magical happens or algebraically magically happens is that any exponent that uh, of anything that being logged actually gets pulled down in front, right? So you can actually bring that down in front. Yes, and again, you haven't seen this before. It may, may not logically make sense, but this is like a... Uh, a property of logarithms is that when you take the log of a number to a power, uh, basically that power can be brought down in front um, and turn into like a multiplication. All right, so we get this. Okay, so left hand side stays the same. The n minus one, the exponent gets pulled down in front. So it, this is this thing here is the same as n minus one times the log three. Okay. Now, the log three is basically just a number. So we treat it as a number, which means that um, if I want to isolate the n now, right? So this is the same as like if I had n minus one times like 17, I divide both sides by 17. Same thing here. Log of three is it's now it's just a number. So I can divide both sides by log three. So this cancels with this. And we get um, scroll this down a little. Uh, so we got n minus n minus one. Oops, she's doing it. So we get n minus one equals this thing here, log of uh, six thousand five hundred sixty-one divided by log of three. So I'm going to show you how to punch that in the calculator. Um, let's just clear this. So yeah, so make sure you uh, you you understand how to do this with your calculator. So I believe for this one here, I need to punch in this number first, and I'm going to click log. All right, so it's going to give me this. So the log of 6,561 is this 3.81169, blah, blah, blah. All right, it's a really long, uh, irrational number. All right, it just goes on. There's no pattern to the decimals, but I'm just going to leave that in there. And then I'm going to divide it by the log of three. So I'm going to punch in three log, and which is the log of three is 0. 0.477. So you got these two log irrational decimals, but once I hit the equal sign, boom. Oh, we just get this. We just get eight. All right. This, yeah. So that looks kind of weird, right? You got this um, long, two long, very irrational numbers. When you divide it, boom, you just get like an integer eight. Well, this here is equal to eight. Okay. This thing is equal to eight. All right. So this thing here is just equal to eight. Um, and therefore, n. To so finally solve for n, and move that thing over. You need to add one right to isolate the n. So n is equal to nine. All right. So what that means is, in summary, that just this is that this number here, thirteen thousand one hundred twenty-two. If this pattern was to continue, it would be the ninth term. It would be the ninth one down that pattern. All right. Uh, logarithms. All right. Uh, we're going to. Yeah, the first few lessons are on these geometric sequences. Logarithms we're actually going to look uh, into more deeply uh, later on this unit. So the second half of this, uh, or actually, so there's a whole unit to it. So the next unit is logarithms. But uh, this is just kind of like an introductory kind of thing with, with how these work. Okay, so um, I'm going to get, yeah, we're, we're going to get into more, uh, I guess, detail and definition of these logarithms in the coming unit, in the next unit. So, but this is just the, uh, the, I guess it's the algebraic way of solving for exponents.
All right. Um, let me make up one more. No. Okay. So I did not have any more examples. So, uh, so yeah. So that's that. All right. Uh, there's a worksheet um, which I'll post. All right. With some practice questions. Um, so basically, geometric sequences they used to be in pre-calc 11. Uh, they, I think they took it out a couple of years ago, but uh, the, the 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 textbook itself hasn't been up. The pre-calc 12 textbook hasn't been updated. So what I did is I uh, I scanned some uh, worksheets from the uh, from the pre-calc 11 textbook. So so anyways, I'll post that um, and just do the questions that are on the assignment sheet. And uh, yeah, so that's that.